you're more real than the wind in my lungs. You're more real than the crown I'm standing on. Your thoughts define me, you're inside of me, you are my reality. Yeah. Come on everybody say that.
Hallelujah, family. Hallelujah. Not the world's thoughts. Not what my past say I should be. But rather your thoughts, Father. Hallelujah, Father. You say, therefore, there's life and not death. There's no separation, but now I'm close to you, Father God. There's no sickness, there's not healing. There's no lack, there's not prosperity. Hallelujah. Your thoughts, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thoughts define me. You're inside of me. like this is a perfect time if you can grab your holy communion elements as we prepare to receive the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the Bible declares at the beginning of each week the disciples came and they broke bread And then it says, as often as you need to do this, do this as a remembrance unto me. Family, I don't know what your often is right now, but you know what it is. Put that often on your mind right now. If it's lack, a renewing of your mind, praying for a family member, sickness, disease, whatever that often is, I want you to put it on your mind. And God says, do this as a remembrance unto me, for my body was broken for whatever that often is that you just put on your mind. Whatever that is, know right now that when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, that often was there. So, Father, we thank you now that through the body of your Son, we are now whole, we are healthy, Lord, and we are full of life, Father. So, on that very same night, hallelujah, disciples, they took bread, they blessed it, they broke it, they said, take, eat. For this represents my body. So family, let's eat our body. Your thoughts define me. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me. Lord, you are. You are my, my reality. reality. You're my reality. Lord, you're not in Reality, Lord. As real as this ground that I'm standing on, you are my reality, Lord. Father, we love now the covenant relationship that it is that you have given us through the blood of your Son. can wash away my sins, fam. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What can make me whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Elder, what can renew my mind? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What could bring in my wavered son? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What could get my money in my pockets? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you now. We receive your blood of Jesus Christ, which is holy. It gives us that relationship. 
And now all you see is us perfect, Father God, in the eyesight of you. No blemish, no fault. Family, let's consume now the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my reality. You are my reality. Your thoughts define me. You're, you're inside of me. You are my reality. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, lift your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on now, everybody declare you're more real. You're Come more on, open up your mouth and declare it. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. The wind. The wind in my life. Come on, with those hands lifted unto the Lord. Come on, declare it today. You're more real. You're more real. Man. Come on, tell him the ground I'm standing the ground on. I'm standing on. Hallelujah. Come on, I need every new creation. With your hand lifted and your mouth open, tell him your, your thoughts. Find me. Hallelujah. You're inside of me. You are mine. You are mine. Reality. Reality. Hallelujah. I promise y'all, we're going we're gonna to take a seat here in a moment, but I need everybody who knows that he is our daddy God. I need you to open up your mouth, and I need you to call to your daddy. Abba! Come on, y'all. I belong to you. Come on, open up your mouth and declare that today. Everybody say, Abba. Hey. Abba. Come on, one more time. Everybody say, Abba. Abba. I belong. I belong to you. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Everybody. Abba. Hallelujah. I belong. I belong to you. Well, come on, put your hands together. Give him a praise. Come on, y'all. Praise Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Like you know, he is our health. Yeah. He is our victory. I dare you to look at somebody and say, he's my God. Oh, no, y'all. Make it personal. Tell him, he is my God. Come on, if I was the only one on this earth, he loved me so much, he would have still given his son. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you and we praise you this day. We thank you that, yes, you are our God, and we are your people. Hallelujah. We are your chosen people. We're not the only ones, but we're just glad that you have us in that number. Thank you for your glory that is in this place. Thank you for all of these, your new creations in Christ Jesus. And I declare that you are the God of all comfort. And I now ask you to manifest yourself in that way in the lives of your people. Father, this has been a good week, a great week for many of us. And we are so grateful for that. But for some, there have been challenges. There has been tests. And there have been tribulations. But we thank you in the midst of it. Because we understand that we don't fight for victory. We understand that we rest in our place of victory. So now, God, you arise and cause every single one of your enemies to be scattered. I speak comfort. I speak peace. I speak strength. 
I speak health. I speak victory in the lives of every person under the sound of my voice. I need every new creation to boldly open up your mouth and declare, I receive it. Now give God a hand clap of praise. Praise him like you know you got victory. Come on, those of you on our virtual platform, come on, you go ahead and praise him too. For this is the day yes. that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I'm gonna rejoice. I, I ain't got nothing but praise in my heart. I ain't got nothing but praise in my spirit. Oh, I done been through some stuff, but I ain't got nothing but praise. Hallelujah. Because our God. Oh. Hallelujah. Go ahead, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Give them a hand, praise. Take your seats if you would. In the presence of our life-changing King, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, hallelujah, for truly he is the Son of the living God. God bless each and every one of you today. I greet all of you in the mighty, the strong, the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. I know today, I know today beyond all shadow of doubt that I am not the only one in here whose testimony is, if it had not been for the Lord, hallelujah, if it had not been for the Lord who is, not was, who is on our side, we don't know where we would be. One more time, family, let's thank God for his presence Hallelujah, in this place. Hallelujah and glory to the name of our God. Again, I welcome all of you. I greet all of you in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. It is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. Again, I thank God for all of you who are in-house today. I bless God for those of you today who are on our virtual platform. We understand that there is absolutely no time nor space in the spirit realm. So those of you who are sharing online, yes, we wish you were here, but the same anointing, the same presence, the same power of God that will manifest in this room will manifest in your homes as well as you receive the word of grace that builds you up and gives you your inheritance. Y'all do me a favor today and bless God for my awesome dynamic partner in ministry, partner in life. Come on, bless God for Elder Lynette. <laughs> Hallelujah. Certainly thank God for her. I bless God for her. And I bless God again for all of the people of God who are sharing today here in the house of the Lord on this beautiful, 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 beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 Again, it's such a pleasure to see all of you today. I thank God. Yesterday I had such an amazing experience. Um, our family members, of course, uh, we certainly thank God for Sherry and, and Cherry uh, uh, we, uh, Wilmore. We thank God for, you know, everybody's favorite twins. We, we bless God for them on yesterday. We had an opportunity to share in, in um, their first, their first annual Twin Festival. The way Louisiana Twin Festival was held downtown Homer. It was absolutely amazing. It really was. It was amazing to see to see twins and multiples from all across, all across this region gather together just to celebrate twins, multiples, and those who love them. It was such a tremendous experience. Can't wait. Cannot wait until next year. I know next year is going to even go to another level. So we certainly congratulate and we thank God. Come on, y'all. Bless God for our favorite twins. We thank God for them and certainly uh, bless God for what God is doing, how he is using them uh, in our community. I mentioned that today because yesterday I had an opportunity to pray. I, I did the opening prayer uh, at the festival, and um, when I finished doing the opening prayer and I, I went back 
and took my place on the, on the dais. And um, while I was standing there, this man of God reached over and he asked me, he said, um, what time is your services? I said, nine o'clock. And um, he said, I'll be there tomorrow. And um, I, I, I thank God because, you know, I get that a lot from a lot of people. But I want to celebrate and thank God today for our new council person who is here in the house of the Lord with us. Will y'all help me to thank God for Councilman Brian Pleasure? Come on, let's bless God for Brian. Amen. Amen. I certainly bless God for him and his wife sharing with us on today. And then, of course, our own Judge Pickett is in the house of the Lord. We thank God for him. Amen. We thank God for Beacon Light because here everybody is somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody just shout everybody. Hallelujah. So we celebrate and we certainly thank God for, for all that he is doing, all that he has done, and even all that he has promised to do because we understand that his promises are still yet yea and amen. Listen, last week, last week was amazing as we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anybody glad he rose? Amen. 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 The Bible says that he was delivered up. He was delivered up. Bring me down just a little bit, please. He was delivered up for our offenses, but he rose for our justification. And because he rose, we all know that we are now justified by faith, and therefore we have peace with God and can operate with the peace of God. So I'm grateful. I thank God for all of you who shared on last week, but we understand that resurrection, we celebrate it every week because we understand that it is all about the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So today, of course, we understand today is the first Sunday of the month, and we understand that there are so many great things that God is doing, even will do in this month of April. The month of April is a very, very special month because the month of April is our Shepherd's Month. Hallelujah. Some of y'all didn't clap. It's all good. On, on, the, on the fourth Sunday of this month, on the fourth Sunday of this month, we will be sharing, of course, in our pastor's anniversary, our 21st, our 21st pastoral anniversary. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited about it. I really, really am. I am excited about it. Um, I've asked, I was in prayer because I really didn't know who we would have to come and minister um, uh, the word of grace to us uh, during our pastoral anniversary. And um, while I was in prayer, I was in prayer, I was in my office one day just praying, and um, immediately the Lord brought this woman of God's face before me, and she just happened to be my daughter. Amen? Amen. No, y'all, I'm serious. Amen. Amen. So on our anniversary, our guest speaker will be none other than my daughter. Amen. Danielle Edmund. You can call her minister, you can call her elder, you can call her whatever, but make sure you call her anointed. Amen? Amen. So I'm excited about that. You know, it's my anniversary, so I get to hear who I want to hear. Amen? Amen. So we're excited. I, I asked her, I asked her and her family to come and to share with us, and um, we're going to treat her like we do any other minister that we bring in from across the country. Amen. Yeah, you know, she's talking about, well, we're going to drive. I say, no, y'all ain't driving down. Amen. No, when we bring somebody else in, we fly them in. We're going to fly you in. Amen. We're going to take care of you. We're going to, amen, y'all. Hallelujah. So I'm really looking forward to this. Our, our, 21st, our 21st pastoral anniversary. And, of course, um, our, my daughter, uh, Danielle Epman, she's anointed. She is gifted. But more than anything, she is a woman of grace. She is a woman of grace, and she understands the word of grace. So I know that we're going to be blessed in a tremendous way. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting this house to be full to the overflow for that one day as we celebrate and thank God for 21 years of faithful service to this community. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for that. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, and glory to the name of our God. Now listen, we do this, uh, well, we, we used to do it every year. We, we, we took off for seven years. For seven years, I did not celebrate uh, pastoral anniversary. And then the Lord on last year, he told me, son, I want you to begin to give the people an opportunity to sow into your life every year for the anniversary so we have started that again we started it last year and we're going to do so again on this year so today we're going to be passing out our um, 21st year pastoral anniversary our anniversary commitment cards of course those of you who have been around for a while you understand there's never no pressure nobody has to do this but those of you who feel led let me show you something first look look at Galatians chapter number six and verse number six put that up for me Galatians chapter number six and verse number six amen Galatians chapter number six and um, that's Ephesians 6 and uh, 13. I need Galatians 6 and 6. Okay, I see it there, but I don't see it here. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. I, 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 wanted, I want to read this because everything we do here at Beacon Light, we do it according to the word. And the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches the word. In other words, what the Bible is saying to us is that those of us who are being taught the word, you are receiving the word of grace from a teacher. And, 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 and the Bible says, everybody say the Bible says, that it's okay for you to share in all of your good things with the individual that is teaching you the word. Now, now if I ain't teaching you nothing, don't share nothing with me. I'm serious. If you ain't learning nothing, don't share anything. But if you are receiving the word of grace in a way that you can understand it, in a way that you can apply it, and in a way that you can see results in your life, then the Bible says you are to share in all good things with him, the person that teaches you. Now, now no, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 5. 1 Timothy chapter number 5, and put that up for me, verse number, what is it, 17? Yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Look to the side. It says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Everybody say double honor. He says, especially those who labor in the word and who labor in doctrine. He says, and he's talking about money here, y'all. He says, let the elders who rule well, he says, let them be counted worthy of not just honor, but double honor. Everybody say double honor. He said, especially those who labor in the word and who labor in doctrine or, or teaching. If, if, if again, if I'm not teaching you anything, then, 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 then you shouldn't honor me. But if I am teaching you the word of grace that is building up your life from the inside out according to the Bible, then I qualify for double honor. Everybody say double honor. But, 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 but again, again, it's on an individual basis. So if you're not learning anything, then don't sow anything into my life. But for those of you who are learning, for those of you who are being blessed, for those of you who are growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we offer you this one-time opportunity once a year to sow into our life by being an anniversary partner. Our anniversary partners, every year, they have, uh, what, four different levels. Uh, diamond level, platinum, gold, silver. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. Uh, you, you decide where you want to sow, if you want to sow. If not, 
it's all good. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still teach the word of God, and we're going to still bless you according to God's word. So for those of you, those of you who are sharing today, and you're saying, Bishop, we're going to be an anniversary partner with you. I'm not asking you to give anything today. Anniversary is not until the fourth Sunday, but what I do every year is when we receive anniversary partners, I have you guys fill out this card, and the reason we fill out the card is because I gather those cards, and I place those cards in my office, and every day I pray God's blessings over these individuals who are going to sow into my life. I come into agreement with you according to God's word. God's word says that he gives seed to the sower, and he gives bread for food. And then he says, I will multiply every seed that is sown. So every day, what I do is I come into agreement with you, and I believe God. Are sowers, then you said you would give them seed. Give them the seed to sow, and then, Father, make sure that nothing is lacking in their lives. Give them their bread for food. And then, because you're such a gracious God, multiply the seed that has been sown. <laughs> Hallelujah. And how many of you know he will do it? He will do it. So those of you today, those of you, those of you who want to be an anniversary partner, lift your hand real quick. Come on, lift your hand real quick. Come on, deacons. Y'all, come on, take care of that really quick. Come on, deacons. Get those out really, really quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where my praise team at? Come on, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all need to be sitting up, standing up here, be ready to kind of sing, sing a little something every night. Come on, keep them hands lifted high. Hallelujah. 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 Don't, don't, please don't miss these individuals up here on the front row. That's the big money row. Hallelujah. Lord, don't miss them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah and glory. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all, you know, I, I just thought about something funny, but I'm going to wait till y'all get y'all cards and I, I'll tell you it. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just thought about something funny. You, you know, no, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, get my mind right. Y'all sing a chorus of that. Hallelujah. Let me get my mind right again. Come on, I was getting carnal for a second. Hallelujah. season of grace. Come on, this is. This is my season of grace. Hallelujah. Now listen, y'all. I need y'all to go ahead and fill those cards out. And then when we receive the offering on today, just drop those in the offering bag. Or, or when, you come, when you come and lay your offering on the altar, lay those cards as well. And we're going to pray and cover you and believe God that by the fourth Sunday, you'll be able to sow this seed without missing a beat. Hallelujah. No lack in any area of your life. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Great grace. Come on, sing that. Great grace. Great grace is covering me. This is my season. This is my season. because we're preparing to give unto the Lord. You all know how we give here at Beacon Life. We are a tithing church. Ten cents out of every dollar that belongs unto God. It is never, ever the ceiling where we end. It is always the floor where we begin. We give a liberal offering because the Bible says that the liberal soul shall be made fat. Third and finally, pastor's love gift. If my wife and I, if we are a blessing unto you, 
you are always at liberty to sow seed into our life and do know that when you do so, God will always honor you with a profit's reward. Those of you who are sharing online today, you know how to give. You can just simply hit the button or simply text to give rather by simply texting B-L-O-H-O or B-L-O-H-T to 28950. You can use our cash app, which is dollar sign B-L Homa, B-L-H-O-U-M-A, or you can go to the website www.beaconlightofhoma.org, or you can do like many individuals do. They just simply mail it in to 4325 West Park Avenue, Gray, Louisiana, 70359. Those of us who are in-house, you are at liberty to take advantage of any of those electronic methods. We have individuals on both sides of the platform. If you want to use your credit, your credit or your bank card, it's very safe, it's very secure. They will assist you with that. Or our deacons are passing the unified offering envelope. Receive an envelope, take a moment, prepare your gifts, and we're going to lift those gifts and consecrate them wholly before our God. Come on, family, let's worship the Lord with enthusiasm as we give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody declare. Thank you, sir. Great grace. Declare this is, is Hallelujah. Everybody, this is my season. This is my season. We trust now that everyone has had enough time to prepare their gifts. Let's lift and wave our gifts. Let's consecrate them wholly before our God. Father, we thank you again and we praise you that you have given unto us seed to sow. Not only have you given unto us seed, but you've given us good ground to sow it in. We decree and declare that no one will suffer for what they are giving, but in and through their giving, we declare that they are blessed, they are favored, they are living a life of increase and overflow. We speak it into their lives, and we declare that it is so. In Jesus' name, we pray amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Get up from where you are, if you would. Come lay your gifts on the altar, along with your commitment card. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody.
great praise, great power, great blessings. One more time, great praise, great power, and great blessings. Look at somebody and say, that's what we working with. Now give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Great, great, great power and great blessings. God bless again each and every one of you. Thank you, worship ministry. Hallelujah. Y'all bailed me out there at the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now listen, of course, this is the first Sunday we're going to share in our, one, our Psalm 133 Covenant Partners um, at the end of this service. We'll do that again at, on the first Sunday of every month this year as the Spirit of Grace has instructed us. And I just believe that all of the blessings that he has spoken over our lives, all of them are manifesting in a very real and in a very tangible way. And the church said, amen. Amen. Thank you, son. Thank you. I want to um, I want to get back into the word of God that we've been talking about and teaching on uh, for the last few weeks. We've been talking about or teaching rather from the subject. This really is there. This really is there. And today specifically. We're going to be talking about Solomon's prayer. La last week, last week we, we dealt with Solomon's blessing, the blessing of Solomon that, that has been spoken over, um, that we spoke rather some years ago over this church family, and we kind of dealt with it because the Lord says that, that all of that which we spoke 14 years ago all of that that we spoke over this house at the opening or at the dedication of this building, he says everything that we spoke at that time, it is in full manifestation right now. So over the last few weeks, what we've been dealing with is the fact that some amazing things really take place in our lives as people of God, as new creations, when we begin to see and to understand by revelation that the fire of God's judgment, the fire of his judgment that each and every one of us deserves, when we begin to see and understand that that fire has fallen on the sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ, our Savior, and not on us, which now allows us to go before God totally sin-free, and allows us to go before God totally righteous before his eyes. When we really get that revelation, when we really get the revelation of how God sees us because of the finished work of Jesus, some amazing things begin to happen. Now, we've been talking about that, and we saw that, of course, in um, 1 Kings chapter number 18, when, when dealing with the, um, the account at Mount Carmel, the showdown at Mount Carmel, I really don't have time to go back there, but we, we saw it in that particular text, and we also saw it in 2 Chronicles chapter number 4, verses 1 through 4. Now, that particular text is the one that, that, that God has, has, has us focusing on in this season. He has us focusing on that particular text because 14 years ago, when, when, we, when we built this particular building, this was the text that God had us to preach. We, we, we taught and we spoke some things over this house for three weeks. For three weeks, we, we spoke things over this house. And the Lord said to me a couple of weeks ago, he said, son, I have you. I have the family of light revisiting this particular text. And the reason I have you revisiting this text in, is, because, is because everything that was spoken, everything that was spoken 14 years ago, God says in this particular season, it is now in full manifestation. Y'all remember, we talked about how it is that, that, that even back then, when, 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 um, when, when the Lord, when the Lord began to, when he began to, um, wow, it's all good. 
when, 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 when he began, get, get, me, get me that chair. When, when, when he began to... Um, when he began to deal with us 14, 14 years ago, he, he had us in the midst of a 21-day celebration. And in the midst of that 21-day celebration, what the Lord did was he concluded that celebration on, on the resurrection day of 2010. Thank you, son. A re Do I, I needed that chair. Amen. No, I'm good. I no, no, I was just messing with him. He what, he, what he did, what he did, family, was he, he concluded, he concluded the celebration, and, and, um, and, and I'm not cramping or anything, it's just, I don't know what that was, but um, he, he concluded the celebration on, on um, Resurrection Sunday of 2010. And, and then it was a 21-day celebration back then. And then this year, as we were celebrating our 21st church anniversary, we started the celebration on March 10th. And the Lord said to me, he says, son, this year it is also a 21-day celebration that ended on Resurrection Sunday 2024. And the reason the Lord says he's done all of this is because it will be the resurrection of the Lord Jesus as our focus that will cause everything that he has spoken to manifest in this season. The first thing the Lord said to me, he said, son, I desire, I desire for, for this house to be a place for my abiding glory. That's, that, that's what the Lord said. He, he said. he said, this will not be a place where, where my glory shows up every now and then, but this is a place where my glory will abide. And he says, because of the fact that this house is designated as a place that centers on the finished work of Jesus Christ, that in and of itself is what will cause this glory to remain. So, so, so we begin dealing with that from, from 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, beginning at verse number 1. Look at what the Word of God says in that first verse. The Bible says, When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And, and, and the priest, he says in verse 2, the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, everybody say, they saw it. They saw it. See, see, that's so important. That's so important. It, when, when everybody saw, when they saw how the fire came down, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord, it, it filled the temple. And, and they bowed their faces to the ground of the pavement. They worship and praise the Lord saying, for the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. See, 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 the, they, they notice the Bible says that they saw the fire come down and consume the sacrifice. That's important. And, and the reason that that's so important is because that fire, it represents the judgment of God. That sacrifice, it represents Jesus Christ, our Savior. And, and, and he says that when the people of God saw that the fire of God's judgment, the judgment that the people deserve, when they saw that that fire fell on the sacrifice and not on them, that's when the glory filled the temple. In, in, in other words, when we begin to see, see, because, because listen, family, whether you know it or not, the fire of God's judgment has already fallen. You know, I, I know in this, in, in this time, you know, whenever something happens, you know, we, we want to say that, that that's God judging the world, when, when that's God judging this group or God judging that group, when the truth of the matter is God has already judged all of us in and through the sacrifice of Jesus. The fire of his judgment has already fallen on Jesus. The problem is, most people in the church don't see it. 
We're still acting like we have to do stuff in order to get God's favor. We, we have to do something to earn his favor when the truth of the matter is all of the fire of his judgment has already fallen on Jesus. And when we see it, we understand that we already have his favor. Hallelujah. I'm already favored. And I'm favored because I put my trust and my confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So, so the Bible says, the Bible says, when they saw, when, when all the children of God, when they saw how, how the fire came down and how the glory, uh, uh, when they saw how the fire came down, the Bible says that, that the glory, the glory of the Lord filled that temple. See, see when, you, when you see, when you begin to see that all of the judgment that, that I deserve, it, it has fallen on Jesus. When, when you begin to see that, not, not, not only does the glory fill this house, but the glory fills your personal temple. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So, 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 so we've come to understand. We've come to understand that, that, uh, that when, you, when you begin to see when you begin to see that, that the fire of God's judgment, it, it has already fallen on the sacrifice, it, it, it literally puts you in a position where, where now amazing things begin to manifest in your life. Look, 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 look go, go, go back. Where, where are we at? Second Chronicles chapter number 7. Look, look, look if you would. Um, ah. Go, 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 drop, drop down to uh, verse number four, verse number four. I, I want you to notice something because last week we talked about Solomon's blessing. Last week we talked about how it is that, 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 that after Solomon prayed, according to 1 Kings chapter number eight, Solomon went out and he blessed the people. And, and, and it's so important because all of the blessings, these were the blessings that we spoke over this house 14 years ago, and God says that all of them are now in effect. So we declared Solomon through his blessing. His blessing was a blessing of rest. Everybody say rest. In, in other words, in other words, Solomon, Solomon spoke over the people of God that, that, that they would be a people of rest. And, and, and we understand that, that that rest, it doesn't mean to just sit idle and not do anything. That, that rest, it, it, it means that, that we are in a place or in a position where all of our needs are met. We are in a place and in a position where deliverance is available for us no matter what kind of bondage we experience. Experience. That rest lets us know that we are in a position where peace always abounds in our lives. We are in a position where, where we're not just, just tolerating life, but we are enjoying life. Everybody shall rest. We, 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 we learned that, 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 that this blessing of rest, it, it, this blessing of rest, it, it, is, it is us as new creations in Christ, being in a place in Christ where all of our confidence, all of our trust is in the finished work of Jesus. It is a place where we are, we are void of worry. We, we are void of stress. And, and we are void of fear because we have this, 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 this spirit of rest that has been released over us. And, and, and we learn that this rest, it is rest that is founded upon the promises of God. It, it is rest that is founded upon the presence of God. It, it, it is rest that is founded upon the provision of God. But then it is rest that is founded upon the peace of God. So Solomon, listen to this. After Solomon spoke this blessing, the Bible says that, 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 that he prayed, the fire fell, they saw it, and then Solomon blessed the people. But notice what happened immediately after he blessed the people. See, 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 God is, God is, is showing us this because everything that he spoke, it is already in manifestation. The glory of God is already here. The rest of God is already on us. Hallelujah. I know y'all, I said hallelujah. And, 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 and see, see, he's just doing things to show us, 
to confirm for us that, that, listen, this is not a figment of your imagination. This is how I'm operating in the midst of this family, and this is how I'm operating right now. Look, look at what he says in, in, in 2 Corinthians, 2, 2 Chronicles, rather, chapter 7. Look at verse number 4. This is after, this is after he blessed the people. Notice what it says in verse number four. In verse number four, the Bible says, Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God, and the priests, verse six, attended to their services. The Levites also with their instruments of music to the Lord, which the king, which King David made to praise the Lord, saying, for his mercy endures forever. Whenever David offered praise by their ministry, the priests sounded opposite them while all Israel stood. Now, now I, need you to, I need you to see something. I need you to see something because notice what happens after after he speaks the blessing, after he speaks the blessing, the Bible says that, that, that King Solomon, King Solomon begins to be generous in his giving. And not only is King Solomon generous in his giving, the priest now begins to blow their trumpets. So, 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 so look at what's happening, y'all. The fire of God's judgment falls. The people see it. Once they see it and they begin to understand that the judgment that I should have gotten, that judgment has fallen on Jesus. And because that judgment has fallen on Jesus, the glory of the Lord is now resting upon my life. And now because I understand that that judgment has fallen on Jesus, I can receive the blessing of Solomon, which is a blessing of rest. But now the Bible says, after speaking the blessing, the king becomes generous and the priest begins to blow his trumpet. Why is that so significant? It is significant because in this era, according to Revelation chapter 1, you and I, we are kings and priests unto the Lord. And the Bible says that after the blessing was spoken, that the king was generous and the priest began to blow his trumpet. Why are you so adamant about that, Bishop? It's because that's where God has us right now. As kings, he is putting us in a position through our Psalm 133 covenant partnership. He is putting us in a position where we, you and I, are more generous this season than we would normally be by sowing that additional seed. But not only that, he has us as priests blowing our spiritual trumpets because he told us back in September that we are to pray in the Spirit like we've never, ever prayed before. He's confirming, y'all, that everything, somebody shout everything, everything that he spoke 14 years ago. It is in full manifestation right now. Everybody shout now. Now, 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 now drop down to verse 12. Drop down to verse 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Drop, drop down to verse 12 because notice what the Bible says in verse 12. The Bible says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said to him, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Now, 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 now this is so important. This is so important because I was, I was, um, I, I, I was, I was, I told y'all that, that for 21 days, 14 years ago, the Lord had me praying the same prayer that Solomon prayed as he dedicated the temple. And, 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 and um, the Lord said to me a few weeks ago the same thing that he said to Solomon in verse number 12. The, 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 Lord, the Lord said to me, he said, son, I have heard your prayer. He said, and I have chosen 
this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Hallelujah. I know, y'all, I know I said it before. I said that, that it don't matter where you go to church. As long as you're going to somebody's church, as long as you're getting the word from somebody, I, 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 I said that, that it don't matter. But, but I need to correct myself because it does matter. Because the Lord said that, 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 that he has chosen this place for himself. I, 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 I'm not saying that, that we the only chosen place, but, but I'm just glad that we one of them. Hallelujah. Oh, no, y'all. I, I, by, by no means. There, there, there are great churches all over America that is preaching the gospel of grace, that is preaching the word of grace. So I will not say that we are the only chosen place, but God told me that we are one of them. He said, I, I have heard your prayer, and I have chosen this place as, as a house of sacrifice. Now, 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 when he says he has chosen this place as a house of sacrifice, he's not talking about this place being a house where, 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 where you know, you got to sacrifice. You need to sacrifice unto the Lord. Come on, y'all. You know you didn't heard that before. You need to sacrifice your time. You need to sacrifice your money. You need to sacrifice this. You need to sacrifice that. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that, yes, we ought to give God our time. Yes, we ought to, we ought to sow into the kingdom. Yes, there are some, but he's not talking about our sacrifice. When he said this house will be a place of, 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 of sacrifice, a house of sacrifice, what he is saying is that this house will be a house that acknowledges. This house will be a house that values the sacrifice that has been made by Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, no, y'all, I said it a couple of weeks ago. If you don't want to hear about Jesus, if you don't want to hear about the finished work, you up in the wrong house. Because in this house... It won't be celebrating man. In this house, it is all about celebrating the awesome sacrifice that has been made by our Savior. Somebody shout glory. It's all about him. Now, 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 now this is where I was trying to get. Because he said in verse number 12, he said, I have heard your prayer. And, 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 and we need to look at the prayer. We need to look at the prayer so that we can know what was prayed for 14 years ago that, that is in full manifestation right now. Somebody shout right now. Go, go, go to 2 Chronicles chapter number 6. Right now. It's in full manifestation right now. We already see it with the glory. He said that he desired for this place to be a place where, where his glory abide. That's why all of 2023, never did it before in my entire ministry, but the Lord had us to, 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 to teach for one solid year on the shepherd's glory. The glory, not that we're trying to get the glory that is already upon us. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness may fill this crazy world that we're living in. Deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord has risen upon us, and his glory is seen on our lives. So, 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 so we already see and understand that, that his glory is upon our life. His glory is in this place. He spoke that, that the blessing of Solomon is in our life. The blessing of Solomon has been released upon us. That blessing being a blessing of rest. And what did he do on the first Sunday of this year? He declared that how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And he said to us that this place is a place of unity unified rest. Everybody shall rest. So now look at the prayer. Let's look at the prayer. Because the more I look at it, the more I know 
that God is with us. Oh, man, listen, y'all, that is some stuff that's getting ready to pop off in this world. And you better know that you know that you know that God is with you, that God has you covered, or you're going to experience hell and high water. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Everybody lay your hand on yourself and everybody declare, God is with me. No, say it like you mean it. Say, he is with me. Not just when I come to church. He's with me in my house. He's with me on my job. He's with me at the jazz fest. He's with me everywhere. I somebody declare, he's with me. This season, you better know it. No, y'all, I'm serious. I'm serious. There's some stuff that's getting ready to pop off in this world. Don't y'all sleep. These bridge of bridge collapsing in Baltimore. Earthquakes all over the place. Don't y'all sleep it. Hallelujah. See, 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 the Lord don't have me dealing with the, the specifics of that because, because he says, son, all of that's covered in the darkness that's going to cover the earth. Every time you see some of that stuff happening, just know I've already told y'all darkness is going to cover this earth. So, so we need to know what we're working with. Hallelujah. Darkness may pop off over there, but the light of his glory is on us. Hallelujah. Ah! The world may be stressing, but we at rest. Everybody say rest. We ain't got no worry. We ain't got no stress, and we ain't got no fear. Everybody say rest. I heard you. I heard you. Now, Bishop, you know. That ain't good, that ain't good English. It ain't good English, but it's great theology. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, you know, I can, I can speak articulate. <laughs> all right, all right. Look, let's look at this prayer. Give me, give me 15 minutes, we're going to look at this prayer. We ain't going to finish it. Because <laughs> some of y'all just looked at me like, Bishop, you know you ain't going to do that in 15 minutes. No, I ain't going to finish it, but we can at least get it started. Come on, look. Man, it's it just so amazing, though. It's so amazing what God is doing in our midst. No, y'all, we, we, we are not smart enough to hook this stuff up like this if we try to. Hallelujah. No, this is God. And, and he's doing it to confirm. He's doing it to confirm that his glory is upon us. His glory is in this house. It's on our lives. He's doing it to confirm that we have the blessing of rest upon us. But look at what he says in the prayer. Look at what he says in the prayer, 2 Chronicles chapter number 6. Look at verse number 12. Did I give y'all 12? I did. Okay, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse number 12. No, notice how Solomon's prayer, we can all learn something from this. Because Solomon's prayer, it begins by thanking God for his faithfulness and always keeping his promise. Before you pray and ask for anything, before you declare anything, you ought to go ahead and thank him that he is a God who always, somebody say always, who always keeps his promise. No, look at what Solomon said, y'all. This is so powerful. The Bible said, then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and he spread out his hands. Keep going. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you. Y'all know what he's doing, huh? That's a little prosukamaye. He's making a declaration unto God. He said, God, you are a bad boy. He says, there is no God in heaven. There is no God on earth like you who keeps covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all of their heart. Whoa, that's so strong. So he said, God, you are a covenant-keeping God. 
Come on, y'all. He said, you are a promise-keeping God. And, and notice what he says. Notice what he says. You, you keep covenant and mercy. That word mercy in the Hebrew is the word hased. Hased is actually the word grace. So what he is saying is, God, you are a promise-keeping God who always gives grace to your servants. Hallelujah. But here's the deal. He, we ain't servants no more. Under the new covenant, under the old covenant, we were servants. And, but now under the new covenant, we are sons. And if he was a covenant-keeping God to a servant, if he gave grace to a servant, how much more will he do it for his sons? <laughs> hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. And, 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 and watch this, watch this, because, because you got to be careful, see, because that, that devil, that devil will, will, will come whispering stuff in your ear like this. He said, now, nah, yeah, you, 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 you listening to Pastor Andrew talking about God keeps covenant and mercy with his servants. You better read the whole verse because that, the verse don't stop there. The verse says, with his servants who walk before you with all their heart. See, and the devil will try to tell you, now you know, you don't obey God like that. You don't walk before God with all of your heart. He's talking about obedience. He, he's saying, you know, the devil will try to tell you that, that this only applies to individuals who are obedient unto God. Well, under the old covenant, that would be correct. But under the new covenant, we are not blessed because we obey God. We are blessed because we put our faith in Jesus who obeyed God for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. We are blessed not because our heart is right. We are blessed because Jesus' heart was right. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. He says, he says, oh, my God. I, he, he says in verse 15, you have kept, he says, you have kept what you promised your servant David. You have both spoken it with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand. Y'all don't even know when to shout. Y'all don't even know when to get happy. Listen to what, 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 what Solomon said. Solomon said, God, everything you spoke out of your mouth, you also fulfilled with your hand. Wait a minute. No, y'all missing it. He, he, he said, everything you spoke out of your mouth, you fulfilled with your hand. No, no, no. Maybe if I go over here, y'all get it. He, he said, no, everything you spoke out of your mouth, you fulfilled with your hand. Notice what he did not say. He did not say, you spoke it out of your mouth, but I had to fulfill it out of my hand. That devil is a lie. If God said it, he's the one that's going to make it come to pass. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If he spoke it out of his mouth, he will perform it with his hand. Hallelujah. I don't care what it looked like. Is there anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. If he spoke it out of his mouth, he will perform it with his hand. Are y'all hearing me today? Look, come on, y'all. Look, 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 look at, look at what he said. Come on, we got to get to the prayer. Verse 17, he says, and now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word, he says, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. Keep going. But will God indeed, look at what he's saying, because he's dedicating the house. He's dedicating the, the temple. He says, will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. In other words, Solomon said, all the heavens, God, 
can't contain you. So, so, so I know that it's a crazy thing for me to ask you to dwell in this little bitty temple because the heavens can't contain you. How much less this temple which I built. And then he says in verse 19, nonetheless, or yet, regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication. Oh, my, oh Lord, my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you. Here's the prayer, that your eyes be open toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. And you may hear the supplication of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. The first thing God asked me to pray for when, when we were dedicating this building, was for prayers to be answered when they're prayed from this place. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. In other words, God says, and now, everybody shout now, that prayer that was prayed 14 years ago is right now in Effect. What are you saying, Bishop? What I'm saying is every time you open your mouth and pray to God and you are connected to this anointing, every time you open your mouth and pray, God will hear you. Uh, Y'all don't hear me today. I said every time you pray, he will hear you. And if you know that he hears you, you know that you already have whatever petition you desired from him. Hallelujah. This is a place of answered prayers. We ain't just praying trying to feel better. No, we ain't just praying as a religious act. When we pray, we understand that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, lay your hand on yourself and declare, I am righteous, and your prayers avail much. Are y'all hearing me today? This is a place of answered prayers. Hallelujah. You didn't complain about it. You didn't talk about it. You didn't put it on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. But I got a question for you. Have you prayed about it? Have you decreed and declared according to the word of God? Oh, y'all not hearing me today. See, 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 14 years ago, I prayed 21 days and asked the Lord to make this place a place of answered prayers. Not a place where we just go through the motion, but a place where when we call upon you, we know that you hear us. Now, isn't it amazing, y'all? Isn't it amazing how, how, how the first thing he talked about was his glory, had us teaching on glory for a year. The second thing he talked about through Solomon's blessing was his rest. He declared at the beginning of this year that this is a place of unified rest. The third night he's talking about answered prayer. And what has he been teaching us? The difference between deasis and prosukamaye, so that when we ask, we know that Jesus is going to do it. Why? Because we make declarations according to the word of God, declarations to the Father. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. So, 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 so he, he, he says, he says, this now is a place of answered prayer. Let, let, let's keep reading. Because he says in verse 22, if anyone sins against his neighbor, and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, he says, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants. Bring it, ooh, bring in retribution 
on the wicked by bringing his ways on his own head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When I prayed 14 years ago, and, 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 and I read that, I said, Lord, make this place a place of righteous judgment. I didn't know what I was talking about. But, 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 but I, 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 I prayed and I asked God to make this place a place of righteous judgment. And, 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 and what I thought that meant, I thought that righteous judgment meant that you won't be able to mishandle people in this house without God dealing with you. Because the Bible says that he will bring retribution on the wicked by bringing the wicked's ways on his own head. So, so, so when I read that 14 years ago, I thought that, that, that righteous judgment meant that you won't be able to mishandle people without God dealing with you. I, I thought it meant that wickedness wouldn't go unpunished and righteousness wouldn't go unrewarded. But I was a little wrong. Because the Lord showed me what this righteous judgment is. He said, no, son, that was old covenant. Where the wickedness of the wicked is returned on this own head. And, 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 and the righteous are, are rewarded because of their righteous act. He said, that's old covenant. He said... When I said 14 years ago that this would be a place of righteous judgment, he says, what I was saying is that because of the finished work of Jesus, because he hung, died, buried, ascended, and is now seated, because of his finished work, he says, the righteous judgment that I was talking about was that anybody in this place who put their faith in Jesus, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you did, you're going to be judged as righteous. All the righteous folk wave at me. Put your hand down. All, 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 all the righteous folk who done messed up this week wave at me. You mean to tell me that you still consider yourself righteous after you done messed up? What about the wicked ways returning on your head? That's old covenant. Under the new covenant, the acts of my wickedness is punished not on my head, it's punished on Jesus' head. And watch this. Even though I'm the one who committed the wicked act, because I put my faith and trust in Jesus, I committed the wicked act. How many of y'all say y'all messed up this week? Wave at me. Because y'all looking at me like, like, like I'm the only one. Don't be tripping on me. Hallelujah, because, because look, whatever that act you did this week, under the old covenant, that thing would have been punished on your head. You would have had to deal with, 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 with punishment because of that act. But this is what Jesus has done for you. You committed the wicked act. God took your wicked act and punished it on Jesus' head. And now because he punished your wicked act on Jesus' head, he now made you righteous. And even though you did something wicked, your wickedness was punished on Jesus' head. And now you are righteous. And because you are righteous, even though you did something wicked, he made you righteous. And you now get the reward of the righteous. Look at your neighbor and say, what a deal, what a deal. That's why they say the gospel 
is almost too good to be true. Hallelujah. He says, in this house, I can't tell you what they're going to do over at Greater Mount Beulah. I can't tell you what they're doing at the house down the street. But in this house, if your faith has been put in Jesus, all of your wickedness will be punished on Jesus' head, therefore making you righteous, and now you with your wicked doing, mistake making self, because of the finished work of Jesus, you've been made righteous and can still receive the blessings of the righteous. Give God praise up in this house. Woo! I got to stop, y'all. See, he said, all of this that I prayed for 14 years ago is in full effect right now. Right now, this is a place of answered prayers. Right now, this is a place of righteous judgment. Because everybody in here who have put your faith in Jesus, God judges you as righteous. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, what's up with your righteous self? Hallelujah. Ah! This is what honors. Hear me, y'all. This is what honors. This is what honors the death of Jesus. When, when, when we can say, I am a mess in and of myself, but because of what he has done, I get to be, I get to be judged as righteous, whole. <sighs> Come on, son, I got to go. We got to go. I got to stop. I'm going to stop here, y'all. There's seven. There's seven things we prayed for. I'm, I'm just stopping right now. You know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this as humbly as I can, but as serious as I can. This really is there. What God is doing in this house, what God is doing in this place, it's not normal. It's supernatural. So when y'all come, when you come in here, even, even those of you online, when you're getting ready to sit in front of the computer, you can't just embrace this as another religious experience. It's not what this is. For whatever reason, the Lord has allowed us to see that all of the judgment that we deserve has fallen on our sacrifice. And because we see it, the harvest is manifesting. The glory is abiding. Hey, people are in a place of rest. Prayers are being answered because people are embracing their righteous identity. And the devil don't want y'all to know this stuff. I'll be fine, y'all. My wife will tell you, I'm whole, I'm healthy, I'm full of life. I work out with Janelle. Don't never have a problem. Never. But the moment I step behind this desk, the moment I step behind this desk, the enemy start attacking me. He ain't attacking me because of me. 
He ain't attacking me trying to stop me. Because what I have, I have. And no devil or demon in hell can take it away from me. But he attacks me because he don't want you to get it. Jonathan, he is attacking me because he don't want you with this. So y'all can't just run up in here like you come into another religious experience. Where's my sword? You need the sword when you come up in here. When you get in here, you need to be praying in the spirit. Come on, y'all. It's enough of us to thwart any attack that the enemy, you, you need to be opening up your mouth and declaring, I plead the blood of Jesus over my man of God. And I decree and declare that no devil or demon will stop him from delivering unto me that which God you have prepared. Come on, y'all. I need you praying in the spirit. I can't do this every time I stand up. I'm fine all week. But the moment I get behind this desk, the moment I get behind this desk, here he come. And y'all know me, I ain't afraid of that. I can handle that. But let's Let's, let's, let's cut it off before we get here. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's cut it off before we get here. Now I need some people who are going to say, Bishop, I'm standing with you. From this day forward, I understand that this is there. I understand that supernatural things are happening in this place. I understand that the devil will do anything he can to stop me from getting what you have for me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Come in this place praying in the spirit. When you sit in your seat, begin to pray in the spirit. Let your neighbor know, neighbor, I love you, but this ain't the time for me to catch up on what happened this past week. We'll talk about that after service. Right now, we got to pray. We got to release the power of the sword in this place because God has something special for us. I wish I had about a hundred of y'all who would give him a shout and a praise. Hallelujah! Ow. Hallelujah. I got enough of this. I'm about sick and tired of this devil. One can put a thousand to flight. You see, this is why I know it ain't about me. Because I can get in my private time. When I'm in my private time, Brian, I'm, I'm receiving for me. And as long as I'm receiving for me, shh, as long as I'm receiving for me, I, ain't, I don't have no problem. But the moment I get ready to deliver to you, here come the attack. I need some people who are going to stand with me. Come on, y'all. I need some people who are going to pray in the spirit. Come on, give, come on, come on, pray in the spirit right now. Come on, open up your mouth right now for about 30 seconds. Come on, just go ahead and pray. Come on, yandariyabase de de bekoshara. Come on, allow the spirit of God to pray through you. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Kabayandoriyase de de bekoshara. I mentioned, I mentioned, 
I mentioned Wednesday night that the Lord told me, he said, all the miracles, all the signs and the wonders that we've been seeing, come on, everybody stand up. We, oh, no, we got to do Psalm 133. Yeah. Um, the Lord told me, he said, every, he said, all of the miracles we've seen over this past year, scoliosis healed. The young boy burned, healed with no scars. Kidney, brand new kidney. He said, all of these miracles you've seen, he said, they're only the appetizer. I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't trying to get no reaction. I'm telling you what the Lord told me. He said, son, that was only the appetizer. He said, I am releasing in this place called there. I am releasing the full meal, a full course meal. He said, you getting ready to see miracles, signs, and wonders like you've never seen before. Come on, lift your hands right there. He says, and I'm doing it for two reasons. He says, I'm doing it so that Jesus, my son, would be glorified, and I'm doing it so that my church will be blessed. I don't know what it is you need in your life in this moment, but if I be not a man of God, you won't make it through 60 days before that thing is not just something you believe in for. You won't be rejoicing by faith anymore. I don't know who that's for, but you know, and all of us will know when we see it manifested before us. Hallelujah. Now listen, we're getting ready to go. But before we do, the Lord told us at the beginning of the year, he sent us to Psalm 133, and he said, this place is a place of unified rest. He said, there is now a fresh anointing that has been released upon me, the leader, that has flown down to the elders, the deacons, the ministers, and all the way down Aaron's garment to the entire body. Everybody with your hands lifted everybody declare I am freshly anointed the Lord said that that anointing would manifest as the favor flowing from the sanctuary of God and descending upon the place of grace and the people of grace he says there everybody say there yeah. Everybody say there. Yeah. This is there. Everybody say there. Yeah. He said there. I have commanded the blessing of life forevermore. Everybody shout life, life. Forevermore. forevermore. He says I've released over this family great grace that will manifest has great power and great blessings. Everybody say great grace, great, grace. great, power, great power, great blessings. Great blessings. Come on, great grace, great, grace. great, power, great power, great blessings. Great blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says that our lives in this season, they will testify to the resurrection of Jesus, our Lord. 
In other words, the Lord says that people will see and know that resurrection power is manifesting in your life, in your circumstances, and in your situation. And then the Lord said, there will be absolutely no lack. Everybody say no lack of any kind for individuals who are connected to this anointing. And he said it will all manifest as we share in unified seed sowing. So right now, we all know what the Lord has challenged us to do. The Lord has challenged us on the first Sunday of every month to sow a seed of $133. But the seed is a sign of unity. And everyone is not in a position to sow $133. So the Lord says, for those who are not in a position to sow that amount, you sow $13.30. But then if you're not in a position to sow $13.30, he said, then you sow $1.33. He said, it's not equal giving, but it's equal sacrifice. And the fact that it is being done as a unified body is what brings the blessing. I need the entire family to come meet me at this altar. Receive an envelope as you come. And we're going to worship him through our covenant partnership established at the beginning of this year. Hallelujah. Come family, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. I receive your grace. For your mercy has been oh, my Come on, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I receive your grace. I receive your grace. For your mercy has renewed, I've overcome, I've overcome yeah. Hallelujah. the world. Hallelujah. I receive your grace. I receive your grace. For your mercy has renewed, I've overcome. I've overcome. Hallelujah. Listen up. Anybody, anybody, anybody? Anybody want to participate and you don't have a dollar thirty-three cents or so, come come see us. We'll we'll sew it for you. But we want everybody to be a part of this. If you don't have a dollar thirty-three, we'll sew it. It ain't about the money, it's about the agreement. Hallelujah. 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 If you need if you need if you need it, if you need us to sew it for you, just just wave at me. And, and I promise you, we're going to take care of it for you. But it's about the agreement. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all just give me a moment. I'm just giving everybody a chance to get settled, giving our worship ministry. You can sew it electronically as well if you choose to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say that again. I receive your I grace. I receive your grace. We're going to pray and then be dismissed. Your Hallelujah. Grace. For your mercy has. For your mercy has renewed. I've overcome. I have overcome. Hallelujah. Y'all got me. Y'all, you put your hands down. I need to see, I need, I need 50 people. I need 50 people who gonna no.
I need, I need at least 25 people who are going to say, Bishop, you don't have to worry. From this day forward, I'm going to be in this sanctuary praying in the spirit. Every Sunday my feet hits this place, I'm going to be praying in the spirit, clearing out all of the foolishness, getting the devil and demons out of here. Because it's not about me, y'all. I didn't figure this out. It's about y'all. It's about y'all. Because I don't have no problems. Not a day through the week until I stand behind this desk to deliver to you. Hallelujah. I was praying for you this week, Clarence. We got to go to lunch, bro. No, seriously. We got to go to lunch. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, y'all, lift those high. Father, now in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. Father, I now speak and decree your blessings upon every single person under the sound of my voice. Father, this is what you told us to do. And it's not about the money. It is about the agreement. And I decree according to your word, as we stand in agreement, no one connected to this anointing will experience any lack of any kind in this season. Thank you for your harvest. Thank you for your victory. Thank you for the glory and the grace that rest upon us. Everybody declared one more time. Everybody say, great grace, great, grace, great, power, great power, great blessings. Great blessings. One more time. Great grace, great, grace, great, power, great power, and great blessings. great blessings. Lay your gifts on the altar and go in peace. Oh, Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. receive your, I receive your, for your mercy has, I've overcome the world. Oh, hey, I receive for your mercy. I've overcome. Say great. 